Hello, everybody. Um, if you don't know me, I'm uh, Mr. Ferguson. I teach A-level product design in year 12. And I'm just going to give you a, a brief uh, introduction or induction to the course and go through the bridging task for this year. So uh, if you give me a moment, I'm just going to share my screen, uh, which hopefully is going to work. Just get rid of this and get that to full screen. Okay, so great. Hopefully now you can see um, my screen on your computer. Uh, so welcome to Design and Technology. Uh, we like to call this a, a cunning combination of uh, graphic products. Some of you may have studied uh, paper on board, uh, product design, and uh, also resistant materials or just the materials element of your GCSE Design and Technology. Um, we bring all three elements together and study product design in quite a, a broad um, delivery. These are typically some of the exemplar work, the kind of work you might be doing with us over the two years. Uh, you can see we've got everything from uh, architectural design, design in the built environment, uh, promotional stands, advertising, uh, small products, small products and their packaging. Um, really, you can, you can bend the course to suit uh, your needs and where you think your futures may lay. So like I've just said, there's a choice of pathways through the course. Progressively, as you go through from uh, year 12 into year 13, you take greater and greater ownership of your own work uh, and the direction that it's going in. Um, and if you're interested in studying uh, design of any, any type at university, you can start to manipulate the course to suit your needs. One key element that you'll all have to do during year 13 is have a, a real client that you work with, that you show your work to, and you get feedback from. So that, that would be a key element of the work in thir year 13. Generally speaking, year 12, the structure, we'll spend um, one hour every two weeks uh, going through design and technology theory. This will mostly be you uh, making notes, doing some half-term uh, assessments for me, maybe watching some videos, but generally broadening your design theory, material knowledge and understanding. Four hours per two weeks will be spent on uh, developing your skills, your core skills. We do this at the beginning of the course, um, just to try and bring you all up to a, a certain kind of like standard. And we'll start off with design sketching and we'll move on to some computer CAD work, some 3D CAD work and using uh, Illustrator. We may get on to do some Photoshop, uh, but that isn't strictly necessary. We'll also, also spend uh, four hours uh, per two weeks working on a mini NEA project. This NEA project is designed to uh, help you understand the mark scheme and to help you produce work that addresses the mark scheme. And in particular, to raise your game from a GCSE student up to the depth and detail uh, that will be required to, uh, to study at A-level. Um, during this period, five hours outside of school, you should be doing your independent study. This will be homework that I set for you, uh, but it may also be you reading around the subject, you watching programs like uh, maybe How It's Made or Grand Designs or any of those uh, interior design type programs that you see on, on the TV. So five hours, developing your scope as a young designer. Um, after January, um, we'll be working still one hour for two weeks uh, on your subject theory. But the second project we do is a collaborative project where I put you into normally, normally two teams of two, maybe teams of three, but normally teams of two. And it's, uh, it's a practical focus project to develop some of your workshop skills, to give you some confidence in the workshop, uh, and to allow you to focus on uh, creating, designing and making rather than uh, producing a design portfolio. So that's generally going to be the, the layout for um, year 12. This is some of the skill building that we do. Um, you can see uh, working with Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, both industrial standard pieces of software. Autodesk Inventor, that's the 3D software that we use. Um, again, that's an industry standard piece of software. And um, we are slowly moving towards Fusion 360, uh, although I'm still experimenting with that. So we may not have that up and running uh, 
for September next year. This is some of the design work that past students have done working on our mini NEA, where they're learning about the mark scheme and the quality of work that needs to be produced. You can see lots of it, um, uh, iterative design going on here with lots of testing and modeling and some, uh, some CAD work. And this second example moves on to not just the products, but the packaging. So uh, again, those of you with a graphics background, this, uh, this will suit you nicely, but it, this will be a bit of a challenge for the girls from the workshop and vice versa. Uh, but overall, we're trying to develop you into a, a broad, well-balanced uh, designer, product designer. So moving on to our bridging task for September, the first uh, task I'd like you to do is to produce a, a timeline for me. This should be on an A3 piece of paper, and it basically shows uh, the history of design over uh, the 20th century, maybe tripping back into the 19th uh, century. Um, and what I would like you to do is to lay out uh, key elements of design history in a graphic way, and I need you to print that out onto an A3 piece, piece of paper in color. To help you do this, um, I've given you, um, in, the, in the information that you should be sent or you're going to be given, you're going to be given uh, these, key, uh, these key elements throughout the century. So like World War II, the Space Age, uh, Art Deco, Art Nouveau. And you need to find out when they occurred and you need to start to present that information in a, in a visual way. As you can see on the screen, this is somebody's work from a couple of years ago. Um, it is a challenge to print it out on A3, and this is me setting you a task that isn't easily done, but I'd like to see how resolved you are actually achieving that. So whether you're going to turn up to my first lesson and say, I've done it, but I just need to print it out, that's not really good enough, or whether I've done it, but I've printed it out um, on A4, that's not really good enough, or that I've done it, and I've printed it out uh, in color and it's A4. Again, that's not really good enough, okay? You should at this stage be able to find a way to print something out A3 color, even if you don't have an A3 uh, color printer at home. So uh, this is a test to see how resourceful you are, uh, how, you, how good you are at overcoming problems and how resolved you are to actually get to a level of success and not just be creative with an excuse as to why you haven't managed to meet this task. Um, task number two, this, this a little bit feeds into task number one because uh, these key designers and their products, some of these could be put onto your timeline as well. But for task number two, I would like you all to produce um, a designer profile. So you pick one person of the, off this list so uh, let's go for um, let's go for uh, Le Corbusier and his chaise longue, and I would like you to do me a profile of uh, Le Corbusier, and then also a profile of his product, um, showing me uh, maybe some of the key elements of how the product is manufactured, the materials that it's manufactured from, and then uh, the key information about the designer uh, Le Corbusier. So as an example, oops, not there. As an example, here you are. So this is uh, Charles René Macintosh, and he was an art and crafts designer. And you can see some of the work that he used to produce. And there's a bit of an explanation about the arts and crafts movement. And then there's some technical information on this page as well, um, explaining how the products were manufactured. So that's a nice little overview okay of Charles Rennie Macintosh and if you all come back in September with your own individual uh, designers on an A4 piece of paper um, we can collate them together put them together as a pack and then redistribute them back out to everybody so you'll end up with a, a nice pack of um, contemporary designers and past designers their work and also some design movements that's the idea behind task number two. OK, so what you need to come back with in September, uh, task number one completed, A3 graphic timeline printed in colour, uh, featuring all, that's oh, all that I've just discussed with you in this little video. 
and uh, a good deal of the items from the second list from task two. And then task two, uh, a profile of your given designer and your product. Uh, print it out would be great. Uh, you can uh, send it to me electronically as well so that I can compile them all together. But I'd like to see your work printed out so that I could collect them in. Okay, let me just come out of uh, here if I can and get back to uh, here we are. So I hope that's given you a, a good overview or a little bit of an overview of the course. I hope you've got a good idea of the bridging task, some of the challenges uh, it may set you. And I hope you're going to be determined to overcome those challenges and turn up with the work in September. If there's any problems, please do just email uh, me or the school and we'll try to help you out. Uh, but hopefully that's going to have you all sorted. OK, thanks very much and I'll see you all in September.